Right, let's have a look at an amazing technology called uh, Docker, which really uh, allows us to create scalable uh, infrastructures uh, that can run in, in the cloud. So what we'll do is we'll look at the VMware Photon operating system, which uh, now supports uh, Docker, it's open source. What to do is to download the ISO. I've downloaded the full ISO. You get all the, the uh, commands that you really need for that. And then, and then I run it in VMware Fusion. But you can also run it in the Amazon, Google, or Microsoft clouds. Just download from there. Uh, so what what is Docker? Well, Docker is is a is a new app, a new way of uh, creating our applications. A small container which contains our application, and it really just contains the application itself without the overhead of the operating system and uh, the binaries and libraries that go along with the application. So our applications have become very uh, very uh, heavyweight. And what we can do is we can cut them down and we can share uh, standard libraries and binaries between our uh, applications and thus make what's called a container. The Docker itself uh, allows the, the management of these, of these applications. Okay, so you can see here we have an application and it doesn't actually have any operating system parts to it and we can run it directly actually on, on the hardware. So this allows us to create very small applications uh, which are optimized and fast to start up and to get rid of each uh, person who, who uh, connects can also have their own container. So we can containerize our applications such as email and word processing uh, and so on. We can also create a, a web infrastructure with lots of web server containers. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, reboot this in this instance. And we'll get started. So what I normally do is I normally set up SSH to be able to log in to the instance. It's not so easy to work on the server because you, typically you can't copy and paste and things like that. So we just let it boot up and you see how quickly that's booted up and uh, try and remember. Okay, so there we are. So the first couple of commands are quite easy. We'll just enable Docker. Then we'll make sure when it starts up, when it's rebooted, it also runs Docker. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit the SSH daemon config file. Uh, so that I can log in. So permit. set to yes so that's okay so we'll find it again that's just a comment and again and then that's set to yes okay so normally it would be no we just set it to yes and that will allow us to log in with the root account and then what I'll do is I'll just set up so that it's enabled So now we just need to find out what the IP address is. And in this case, the address is 172.16.121.246. I'll just hopefully see if the service is running. logged in and it'd just be easier on my, my Mac terminal to connect to the server than it will be actually running from the console on the on it. One seven two sixteen one two one two four six. Perfect. And that's it. OK. 
Okay, so I don't I don't need this one anymore. I can just use my Mac there. Okay, so Docker should be should be enabled, and uh, we should be able to to run a command. So what we have is a repository with certain containers, or we can create our own container. Uh, this uh, container here is a standard one created by VMware, and it's a web server container. So we just demo that. Pool will take it from the VMware repository. And normally, what you would see is it downloading here, but I've already, I've already uh, downloaded it. So if you want to have a look at the commands that uh, that are there, then just minus minus help and what we're looking for is images so we'll just have a look at the images that we've downloaded so we can see here here's the the linux uh, server and it's 93 meg so 93 meg for our container you see how small that is so we could create hundreds or thousands of those on our servers and have them all running at the same time so to run our docker container we just run the command here. So the minus P option defines which port number we're going to run the container on. And uh, we'll just run that. Okay. So Docker PS allows us to list the, uh, the containers that are running. So there's a container ID there. And this is the mapping of it there. So remember, this isn't running off the server. Uh, you need to remember that, that Docker is running the web server. So there can be a web server on the on the system. So I just show, hopefully, what the the web server looks like, so that you can see that it, that it isn't that. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so there's the there's the default web server. So what we're going to look at is um, is accessing the container okay so the container could be delivered to to different users and uh, so what we've got I'll just pull the IP address again and it's one seven two two five seven and there it's there okay so that's the container that's actually running and uh, creating our, our web uh, service. Okay, so another one that uh, we can use is the we'll see. Uh, so I've already downloaded the, the we'll see container. Let's try again. Okay, so it's, it's quite a simple just a little demonstrator uh, container uh, there. Okay, we can also search on our repositories for um, containers. Uh, so you can see here we can get things like a full Tomcat uh, infrastructure, MySQL, a full database infrastructure. Uh, we can get uh, things like WordPress, so we can get a complete WordPress uh, download. And we can even get a, a desktop, which will run within a, within a web server. Let's see if we can get our WordPress. It's unlikely th this will actually come down okay, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a try. So once we pull this down, then uh, we can then run it, and then we'll, we'll be able to run full WordPress sites as as containers. So in this way, we could have again we could have thousands of these containers running, all with their own uh, WordPress uh, uh, containers uh, from them. 
This one here is interesting. Uh, this is a Docker desktop. So the desktop actually runs completely with inside uh, a web a web browser, and that way we can deliver a desktop through a, a web browser. And what all we're really doing is to create a container for that to actually run. Okay, so that's been an introduction to to the uh, to the creation of uh, containers uh, within size photons.